So okay. hello, Tim and David. Welcome to our first show. And we are going to talk about RPAs um, that also called robotic process automation. And what are those RPAs? Um, RPAs like um, some bots that can automate your business processes. So like something as a software robot and they're doing something tasks that normally humans would do. So for example, filling out forms and so on. And it can also be in the healthcare, finance, retail and so on. And yeah, Tim and David, maybe you can say something more about that and maybe also the pros and cons. So David or Tim, who wants to start? <laughs> oh, let, let, let me start. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, RPA. It's it's an interesting topic. It's uh, it's it's been a it's been a while around in the market, and uh, have seen quite some companies uh, from different industries adapting to it, and I can see and understand why a lot of companies are adapting to it because when you imagine like repetitive tasks where people have to copy an information from A to B or manual retyping it from from a really a physical letter into a, like a system there will be many mistakes can be done because like misspelling of names or not clicking all the check boxes. And so companies can really uh, gain benefits from improving the data quality for the further data processing uh, stages. And on the other hand, if you have a really repetitive task where you have to uh, copy and paste, I don't know, thousands of records, the bot can be really helpful. So it can really in the short term, it can make a business way more efficient, cost-effective, and faster. But if you take it from the other side, like what are the disadvantages, in my opinion, is if you see uh, you have a an, an, an robot that is using surfaces, the UI of an application, and it's not really tightly integrated with the application itself. So once the application interface might change, the bot also need to be changed as well. So I think in a long run perspective, like the integration part can be a really tricky one and could create a lot of uh, costs, unforeseen costs from the business side. And also data security, like you really open up your UI, your information to the bot, which has taken the credentials of a user instead of how privileges of a system user. So data security and robots can be a danger also to data uh, security aspects, um, but that's more, I would say like what helps is a short-term problem solving tool. It's a temporary solution in my opinion. And in a long run, um, you have to run an API program, but um, an API program is nothing that is built overnight. So that takes a while. So you have to align this both topics. David, any comments? You are on mute. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Security can be can be uh, uh, a concern. In fact, in fact, it is. No, but 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 I, but I also think that, that with a good design in your architecture, this this concern uh, can be addressed. You know, most of the hyper automation solutions relying on RPA are are you seeing, uh, uh, I, I'm going to simplify uh, a lot, but do, do, do you use RPA at the front end and, and APIs at the, at the back end? So if you, if you design the, your APIs from the, from, the, from the very beginning by securing them, I mean, uh, introducing or secu securing your APIs from, from uh, late, from, from early early stages of the design processes and you and you set up your RPA solution uh, properly uh, addressing the security concerns uh, you have in your contest of course you you have you will have to make an assessment of your security breaches and and design the proper the proper measures to to prevent uh, attacks if you if you follow all all, all of those uh, tips your 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 solution your end so your, your end solution will be will be secure so no problem at all no no but i agree with you mainly just just wanted to highlight that yeah awesome awesome yeah what, what do you think about like the um the the, the terms of like is, is rpa like a technology but will accompany us for the next 
10 years or is it something like a temporary solution that will have now a peak season and then will be seen less uh, once the API programs will be more established in companies? But I, I think that the, the RPA has evolved a lot in the, in the recent years, probably also uh, be, because of the, 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 the boost that, that AA has, has suffered itself. I mean, AA has developed a lot as we all know. So the, this has allowed us to, to improve the, the quality of the bots using an RPA. Uh, and also, and also APIs. <laughs> this this is quite can be tricky. <laughs> and, also, and also, and also API solutions have have been uh, uh, adopted, but but most companies on on the market and w but from from the integration of of both uh, RPA solution or, or hyper automation solutions have also improved a lot. For example, this this allow us to uh, imagine that, that you receive, you are uh, an insurance company and you receive an email to, to, for, to an input box uh, with, with uh, an, a standard document attached with the ID of the, of the, of the, of the, of the uh, user and, and also a picture of, of the accident he has just suffered. In, in the car, so just just in a bot, you can you can uh, scan the document to get the ID and also to process the the picture attached to the email. Do whatever you have to do. For example, query in a database to extract or to retrieve the all, all the information uh, in the system from the user and then take an action. But the, this action than than normally. Would be done by a human interact intervention. Now it can be, it can be done automatically. How invoking an API that first will retrieve the information from the from the database and then and then uh, give a, an order to the bot to do another task. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so in 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 a, in I would say one click you have the whole life cycle of the action done. I think we, we should distinguish between uh, attended and unattended bots in that case. I mean, there are bots which are running purely in the background, and I think these should be, uh, once it's possible, be replaced by APIs, if the backend system has APIs. But if you have an attended bot, like something that's running you as a user on your screen and in your behalf, it can be really something really beneficial, especially when you say, let's try to improve this process here for a while, instead of creating a new project or program within the company that costs millions. Uh, it's rather like a preferable option, which is like helps the business to really streamline, optimize, make the process more efficient. That's, that's a great view. Like yeah, everything you said, David, completely down the line. <laughs> yeah, I agree with your, with your, with your distinction. Of course, it's not the same if the bot needs a, a, or in the process is attended or unattended, but uh, um, the difference at high level, the difference is the attendance part. I mean, I mean, uh, in an attended in an attended uh, way, you have uh, one process waiting for another process, and the connection between the two processes is done automatically. Okay, then in the unattended way, you have two processes, and the connection uh, between between the two processes is done by the occurrence of an event, which is a human intervention. Okay, it's, it's, uh, it's almost the same. You are waiting for someone to connect the, the both processes. You know, in the first, in the first uh, case, you can, you can do it on one step. In the second, in the second you, 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 you do it in two steps. But, but it's, it's almost the same. The difference is, uh, for example, if this is integrated in a workflow, in a workflow tool, Imagine that in, in the when when the, the 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 first process has has been finished, he can uh, the system can send a notification to the human which has to to go on with the flow. The the human do whatever and then click a button, generate the event, and the process continues. So it, it's important it's important this distinction in an attending process the RPA. A solution has to be integrated in our with, with a with a workflow engine. If don't, it will be stopped. 
Can I ask you now a, a more tricky question? So I have an opinion about it, but I'm looking for your opinion. So <coughs> what do you think? Who should like create and maintain slash develop the robots? Is it the business that is, has the problem and knows the process? Or should it be like a central robot processing automation team that creates centrally according to certain standards and so on, uh, the process? What is your opinion? That, that, and, your, and your opinion? <laughs> I think it, I also agree this is a tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> so so then, then let me go. You say that it, it, it depends. Uh, as it happened in many in many in many other IT initiatives, I think that what is important is to have a framework. A governance framework stating who has to do what and how. That's important. So to, to in in order to to this framework to be to be uh, broadly accepted in the organization, uh, of course, business and IT people needs to understand and talk this. I wouldn't say the same language because it's impossible. Business is business, IT is IT. But 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 I think that they have to to make an effort to in order to 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 this effort to happen, the framework. Is the responsible of, of doing that? So, so the framework should should allow uh, business business uh, staff to to uh, to set the criteria or or the tasks to be done, but also the framework should be flexible enough to translate those business goals into IT tasks. I think one. I totally agree, except one point with you. Where I don't agree is like the same language. I think business and IT have to speak the same language because in the end, there is a role that is building the robot. A different dialect. You can't agree on that. But let, let's see, they have, have, they have the, there's a role. So that role has to perform to do the action of creating the robot. And I think there should be a community and a framework as soon as I described, so that those people that having the role of being a robot developer they should speak the same language with a little dialect, like more business flavored, more technical flavored. But in general, they should speak the same language and have a common understanding about the general frameworks and governance elements in, in, a, in a robot's uh, development way. Because like in the end, you need some, some rules, fundamental essentials that you have certain quality rules, but you need still the freedom in the business or in the, in the unit that's developing it to do it um, as, as, autonomous as possible, in my opinion, because otherwise you will not be, if you build a completely centralized team in the IT where two two robot developers are, and then you have 15 business units waiting for two developers, that won't work out, in my opinion. So I think it's a role, they should speak a language, and it's really important to create a community around it so that even somebody that's occasionally touching robot development every two months, he should be able to catch up, build the robot, find the community, get the help he's looking for, um, so that's that's my point. never underestimate the community. It's really crucial for every everything you build. Yeah, I agree with you once again. Great. <laughs> Perfect. Full we'll stop. Thank you. <laughs> so then, thank you very much for your opinions to RPAs. I think it was really interesting, and we will see it on the next podcast, right? Yeah, right. Then thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so then, see okay. you then. Bye. See you there. Bye. Bye.